minutes. We have a little break here. You guys can go off air. I still imagine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. You get to go. <laughs> Clerk, please call the roll. Alder Wood? Here. Alder Kitzler? Here. Alder Moore? Here. Alder Ford? Here. Alder Spade? Here. Mayor O'Connor? Here. I'll stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Right. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the December 4th meeting? <coughs> so moved. Second. Any corrections or additions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, doesn't look like there are any appearances. There is no public hearing. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Move to second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Consent agenda is approved. Uh, council action at items. There is no unfinished business. Uh, actually, um, item 2B under new business, um, Dan, we are not going to approve that for uh, <coughs> immediate act. We're not going to take that up for immediate action tonight. So I guess we that will be considered just new business, but we're not going to finish it. Um, if that made any sense. <laughs> 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 Item 2A, consideration of resolution 18-1-2230 requesting exemption from county library tax put forth by the library director. This is started for immediate action. Move to approve, uh, move to take this item out of order. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Move to approve. Second. Ryan, would you like to come up and explain this? <laughs> I, can do, I can do my best from what I know. We can help you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, as far as I'm aware, uh, this is done every year and yep. it involves the Dane County and that has a tax on its um, people pay in order to help library services for the Dane County Library. However, if a municipality provides X amount, I can't remember the exact number of funding then you are exempt of that tax and so this is to say that yes we have that funding and we need to have it signed and turned into the dane county library services uh, trace harold's the director and said we're actually a little bit past but she said that should be fine uh, ap apologies that's my oversight on that I should have done this about a month ago any questions of that really brief rundown i Great. guess not thank you thank you all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed Motion passes. Uh, item G2B, consideration of resolution 18-1-2229, purchase approval of one current model year three-quarter ton pickup truck with plow put forth by the Public Works Committee. And as I said before, we will not be, um, this is not requested for immediate action. So Mr. Stefani. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, in your packet, you have the resolution, the fiscal note, and some uh, specification data for the pickup truck that we're seeking to buy we have uh, thirty six thousand dollars in the 2018 capital budget for this purchase uh, we'll be sending to auction a 2005 chevy 2500 pickup with a snow plow uh, on the front of it um, we are seeking to purchase uh, a replacement pickup truck through the state cooperative purchasing contract from ewald automotive group for the price of thirty one thousand nine hundred dollars and uh, this is for a gas uh, three-quarter ton pickup truck with a plow. Um, I've also included uh, some uh, other pricing information in there that was from the state contract that had a Ford F-250, the gas price, the F-250 CNG price, as well as the Dodge gas and CNG price. Uh, so you can see those offered by the state contract there. And then I also had some uh, calculation data uh, the first one was from the MG&E uh, CNG savings uh, calculator, and then the other one was from a website online, cng1.com. Um, pretty equivalent in the estimated payback time frame uh, if we were to consider buying a CNG uh, 
F-250 pickup truck. Um, so, any questions? Does anyone have any? Alder Moore? I'm sure you probably know what I'm going to ask, which is, did you, uh, were, were you able to look into the, I, I think it was the Ford, actually, that has the... EcoBoost? The, the EcoBoost or, or the, the um, automatic on-off. Which is part of the EcoBoost? The EcoBoost is included in the F-150 version. Okay. Once you make the jump up, Do they the don't offer that anymore. Okay. Um, the on-off uh, start-stop, they don't offer that in the F-250 level truck. I'm not sure if they offer that in the F-150 level either. Um, okay. But th this truck does have the flex fuel, um, the okay. 85, E85 option as well. Okay. Um, but for, for that... Um, you know, Elder Wood also asked at the finance meeting if they had a hybrid option. Right. Um, not aware of any hybrid option at this level. There was another manufacturer, um, not one of the um, big three in the United States, but one of them was developing a, an electric model pickup truck, but that is at the half ton uh, level model. Mm -hmm. um, nothing at the F-250 or above, so. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, item G to C, consideration of resolution number 18-1-2231, amending the 2018 operating budget to expand funds available for merit payment. Put forward by myself. Is there a motion to take this out of order? Move to suspend the rules and take this out of order. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, is there a motion for approval? Motion passes. Is there a motion for approval? Uh, move approval. Second. All in favor? Or I will discuss this first. Um, basically, what happened was we have, uh, I think it's 18000 allocated for merit in the 2018 uh, <coughs> operating budget, and this is something that the uh, city administrator usually comes up with a proposal for, and it, it's for permanent um, non-represented staff. So that means that the police and fire um, aren't, the right, patrol officers and firemen are not eligible for this since they are still represented. So um, April has come up with a process and the department heads fill out a form recommending um, merit for various people in their departments. It doesn't necessarily go to everyone. Um, and then she and I would work on final determination because of course there's always more recommended than we actually have money for. And we began the discussion of that and I should have looked into this earlier and I didn't. Um, and I discovered that the library staff have not been considered for any of this merit pay, which I don't think is right uh, since they're city employees as well and they're they're not represented anymore either they all used to be in a union so what we want to do is expand it to include library staff but that's adds an additional eight to ten people which means that the amount that we have allocated is really not going to be enough so what I'd like to do I took a look at what was allocated last year and basically it was I think I figured out it was about 60 percent um, the amount allocated was about 60% of what could have been given if everybody had been given the top number they could they were eligible to earn and so anyway I just used that to come up with this number for of 3300 to add to the <coughs> funds allocated from the fund balance and then if this is approved that gives us what 21,300 and we will take a look at all the eligible staff then and allocate it accordingly. Does that make sense? Does sure. anybody have any questions? Alder Spate? So when are merit bonuses typically given? I think it's usually early in January. Oh, okay. So because it's, it's part of the 2018 half. budget. Okay, right? got it. Mm -hmm. So it, it's kind of, it always, it usually happens about the time of evalu evaluations are done in December and January and then merit bonuses are given then as well. And I, April, did, we did include, um, she came up with some criteria for that and we've revised it a little bit to reflect uh, covering the library staff as well. It's in the packet. So there's Alder no, there's no Christmas bonus here in 
or you know, ho pre-holiday bonus? No. no. Okay. Because the money is always for the next year from the next okay. year's budget. So comes in time for the credit card. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Good point. Good point. <laughs> Alder Kitsai. Uh, I'd just be interested in how many um, individuals are put up for the merit pay and what that difference is. You said it's about sixty percent of what we budget and what people. I just it's not contingent on my vote tonight, but I'd just be interested in the information. I think there are a total of 45, last year there were a total of 45 people eligible, is that right? And we gave it to like 34 or something? That or sounds about right. And you mean by eligible, you mean they fit the criteria they or rec are recommended? Right, but they're not represented and they're permanent staff and so they're salaried. But is, that's different. So are those 45 the people that were recommended? No, there are 45 that total people who could have gotten it. Okay. And, and some, you know, we, we pulled off because, you know, they were brand new employees, yeah. you know, or probationary. There's usually some for that. But what subset is recommended by department heads to get the merit pay? Is it 40 of the 45? I, I'm getting there in were, too much detail, but I think there were 33 or 34 yeah. last year okay. who were recommended. Okay. Well, you know, and frankly, most of our departments are fairly flat. Um, yeah or unionized so you know police and fire most of their employees are unionized so you know dan's got you know several employees you know but say for instance like the planning department that's a department yeah. one yeah. so you know that kind of makes it you know some of the difference right there too so but then the question came up of kind of part-time people and um basically i started the guidelines with what had been done in the past and then you know started with that and then kind of took it from there and when i started well, they just did not go to library employees so it wasn't something i consciously said oh, no yeah, to no, that no, it just no. kind of this has kind of morphed and evolved over time i would say no i'm glad we realized this this started as something that just went for department heads mm -hmm. before at at 10 was passed and and it was worded as it went to non-represented employees hmm. and because all of our employees, except the department heads, were represented before Act 10, and then Act 10 was passed, and gradually, a lot of people lost their union representation. Hmm. So, it pro it should have been looked at at that time, and wasn't. But That's instead, right. they just past mayors just kept adding people as they came off of being represented to be considered. And gotcha. Here's where we are, Aldermore. So uh, maybe this is a follow-up to um, what Alder Kitzler was talking about, but I, I guess what I what I'd be interested to know is is it it sounds to me uh, like it is actually is more of a bonus. It may not be a Christmas bonus, but uh, but are you actually uh, distributing amounts based on merited service or are you just automatically giving everyone something based on their length of service or no it's it based on merit it is yeah. it is actually based yeah on merit. that's why they have to fill out a form and you know justify here's why I think that person deserves what they're going to get and not everyone gets the same amount the same amount no okay. but some department heads Dan for instance I think is probably a little more judicious in how he requests distribution than some departments they give a little bit to everybody other departments stand definitely looks more at some people get it some don't um, it, it varies okay Alderwood I think Alder Spade had his hand up first oh, Alder Spade. well I just I would I'm, I'm happy to vote for this because I think it's you know time is of the essence for this but but and and I su I support it but I do want to just clarify what was said about how much we're giving out or how many people are worthy or deemed worthy I should say what I heard said was that about 75 percent of the eligible employees are deemed worthy of some sort of merit last bonus. year they were given about right, 75%. right, like 34 yes. out of 45, and yeah. then there's a range for each level, mm -hmm. um, and you know if we gave out roughly 20,000, I heard you say that we gave, if if everyone got the maximum, if all 45 people got the maximum they're eligible for, we wouldn't have enough. We wouldn't have had enough, but yeah. we budgeted about 60 percent of that, and so we're divvying it out. We're assuming 
that about s <laughs> that 75 percent of our staff are worthy uh, or are going to end up getting a merit bonus and that they'll you know I'm roughly doing the statistics in my head but each one of those people is getting roughly 80 percent of what they could get you know some are getting a hundred some are maybe getting the minimum the <coughs> it mm -hmm. would and that's all fine I mean I guess that's what I would expect um, but I just wanted to make sure I heard that right yeah I think Aaron uh, the April that's basically yeah. what we do isn't it yeah That's I mean I guess the easiest example would be department heads most likely everybody's going to get something but right. you know the first thing I started with is just you know what did they take on in the in a year like for example the year that I you know there, there was a gap between administrators you know um, Mark and Leah had to take on a lot more work um, right. there's you know maybe the year Joan had six elections that year so you know it kind of depends on what people had going on so sure. I kind of look at I start there and just see what people had going on but overall you know everyone's incredibly competent and it's a good problem to have oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so and that's what makes it complicated and uh, as you've said I mean the, there is definitely something to rewarding people who are just always there and always doing a great job and maybe they don't have an opportunity to run an unusual project because of the nature of their position well then it doesn't yeah. seem right that they should never receive any zero. kind of a merit you know so it's I, I guess the it's question, complicated mm -hmm. yeah. understanding now that or having clarified what we're doing in practice I guess what I would say is that while it certainly seems logical that the merit you want the the merit bonuses we want to give out in a year are going to be that magic average of the sixty percent, but there might be some years when you feel that you know ninety percent of the staff qualified for a merit bonus, and you know there was just exceptional uh, performance across the city. Would you come to us and ask for that money? If because I know we're doing it now because we there are people we haven't included, but I know you wouldn't give out more bonus than you. Uh, you wouldn't just give out the bonus money to give it out. No, but but if you needed true. more money, would you come to us? Because I, I mean, I feel like n knowing how exceptional so many of the people who work for the city are. Uh, you know I would and again I don't want people to ex you know just expect that they're going to earn a hundred percent of what they're eligible and I get I like this criteria I think it's good that you know the emphasis is on these first three things which I think are really important things for someone to demonstrate in their job but if you needed more money to give out because of what has happened I would hope you would come to us and I, yeah, I guess we haven't gotten to that point. Yeah, I, I think we almost discussed this a hundred times during the budget process and <laughs> never quite. It, I mean, yeah. did you basically set up these ranges, didn't you? I, I did just to put because there really something. was nothing. When, no, when okay. she and it was more of a suggestion, started. frankly. So, okay. Well, I think I'll would and then I'll let him go first. Okay. Uh, so I know some of the discussion around this has been and we've talked about it briefly here is this really helps deal with the problem that's in front of us but it's connected to the bigger discussion about compensation and how we look at that <coughs> where this program originally when it was for department heads it was a way to um, recognize um, their performance that was outside of union representation and it's only been watered down and I mean I think I echo the same statement that like this takes care of this problem mm -hmm. with the idea of like we have a bigger a bigger issue to address and the criteria is helpful for now but I would want us to have this be part of a larger discussion about compensation and how do we deal with compensation as a bigger issue rather than one-offs and right you know my department head tells everybody the max and your department head doesn't like I don't right. want I don't want that to influence um, 
morale and performance in which this has the potential of doing. Mm -hmm. And I'd rather have the focus be something that's a little bit more predictable, um, even though I think this is a good first step. Right, that, that, and that was my intention, to get us through this year and making sure we're including library as well, but I think we have discussed taking a overall look at all the compensation in view of this family leave, paid family leave discussion, and this will certainly be part of that in this coming year. Alderwood? Um, Alder Holmquist basically covered what I wanted to, to talk about. No, <laughs> you said it probably better than I would have, so. Um, the only thing I, just to emphasize, the reason non, or it's only non-represented employees is I believe that to, if we gave uh, merit pay or any raises outside the contract to represented employees, it would be considered an unfair labor practice. So that's why it mm -hmm. has to be this way. Okay. So there's just sergeants and lieutenants included. And the police chief is in the pool. That's eligible. Right. Alderman? Yeah, I just, uh, I, I would, um, I, I, I certainly appreciate um, the criteria. Um, I'm a little concerned over, would raise a concern over goal number one, which is to say to it says reward good workers and then in parentheses and motivate ineffectual ones. Um, the research is pretty dang clear. <laughs> that um, for, you know, uh, providing extra money for somebody who's not effective is not a motivator. Like This would be not providing extra money. Yeah. To right. Them. That's yeah. how I yeah. take it. Right. The fact that they didn't get a bonus. Oh, I thought you were talking about giving them a bonus as a way to motivate them to be more effective no, the way yeah, that was written. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> okay, got it. Uh, the way you had, I thought you were talking about, oh, well, let's give them some more money and maybe they'll kick in a year. Okay. No. Thank you. <laughs> no. Nope. nope. <coughs> Anything else? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes and thank you. Uh, I think oh, we are going to get out of here really early. Um, <laughs> move on to reports <laughs> of committees, commission, boards, etc. Uh, Alder Coor. Nothing to report. Alder Holmquist. No report. Alder Spate. No report. Alder Wood. No report. Alder Kitzler. Uh, on behalf of the library board, I'll talk about Loud in the Library, which is, uh, I'll have one more meeting to tell more about it, but it is January 27th. 7 to 10. 7 to 10, right here in the library. It's fun. It's a camping theme. Uh, last year was Mardi Gras, and it was uh, a very good time, so I recommend uh, doing it. It's a good fundraiser, and there's a lot of people around, and bring your friends. And more than tickets with me if you're interested. Yeah, she has tickets. I can get tickets. You can buy tickets up here. And you wear camping gear yeah. to this one, right? Yeah, I you can wear camping gear. There'll be s'mores. There'll be a special guest. Uh, if yeah. anybody needs help with that, I have closets full. Just yeah. <laughs> let me know, <laughs> and I'll be happy to <laughs> dole it out. <laughs> you have to take it out. Oh, my hiking boots. So. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Thanks. Alder Moore. Nothing to report. Uh, city clerk. Um, all four of the candidates who took out nomi uh, nomination papers have returned them, and so we do have four candidates for the April election, and um, otherwise just returning from vacation and catching up, but that's kind of the news. So we're all set. All right. City Administrator Little. Um, also unburying from vacation. Um, just a couple things. I'm working on finalizing our um, what we'll call cleanup ordinance from the recodification. And um, I guess unless we hear any strong objections, um, I heard from everybody about a potential earlier time start for um, this meeting. So um, that will be in included in the, the proposal unless I hear anything loud tonight to not do that. Um, and don't forget to leave your laptops with me so that we can get those updated by our friendly IT people. So. We would appreciate that. And we're talking about a start time of 7, correct? 7 would be the start time. 7, 30. Correct. So bumping it up half an hour. Okay. Um, I just wanted to remind you all that our next meeting is also on a Tuesday because of the Martin Luther King holiday. So that will be on January 16th. 
Um, I am working on uh, deciding about uh, committees to take to work on the bike ped um, pro funding the project that we've got for that as well as the uh, long-range facilities planning uh, project so you'll be hearing more about that in the coming weeks uh, I think we have um, some appointments uh, to the distinguished service award committee May 1st 2016 to April 30th 2019 Kathy Thomas and Paul Kockelmeyer uh, again to this the same committee from May 1st 2017 to April 30th 2020 Marianne Litchfeld and Steve Halverson I think looks like these are things that should have appointments that should have happened in the yep. past year or two and <laughs> slipped through the cracks here uh, and finally um, appointing Tony Gomez Phillips to Park and Rec effective immediately through April 30th 2020 he is taking Greg Anderson's spot so is there a motion to approve I'll move yes. move approval Okay. I'll second, but I have a question. Okay. Chad? Um, so I assume or presume that all four of the people on the Distinguished Service Awards Committee are reappointments? Is that yes. Yep. Okay. And I'm just wanting to ask, you know, I, I think that there's anxiety about us trying to enable our committees to have some sort of mechanism for new blood um, and I, I don't I know it's a very indelicate thing uh, politically to uh, you know confront because no one wants to tell someone that's been a great servant to the city for 30 years that you know thanks but it's time to move on how, when are we going to address this, uh, at least to have the discussion? Um, are you talking about the process that I've talked mm -hmm. about coming up with? Yes. Yeah, uh, that is ready to go. I'm just waiting for April to take a look at it. She has not seen it yet. Okay. Nancy Aldermore and I have been working on it a lot with Leah. Um, all the Holmquist has seen it and approves. Okay. Um, it's wonderful. They've done some really nice work on it. Okay. We've really okay. put a lot of time and effort into it, and there's a couple different parts to it. One of is, one of which is new appointments. Um, there's another process for reappointments, which we're going to. I'm, I'm hoping to send this out to you all within the next week. But okay. there is a process for handling reappointments, and you're all going to be expected to, as part of your committee, being a committee chair, to participate in uh, handling reappointments for people who come up whose appointment whose uh, terms expire each spring so we have a process for that and that's not to say that everyone whose term comes up shouldn't be reappointed I mean but there are as we know there are some people who are effective and some who aren't and um, who are probably ready to move on so anyway I, I hope to send that out within the next week as soon as April gets a chance to look at it and then we'll <clears throat> get more into the starting off the whole reappointment process which will be a process we'll be following every spring so okay um, Great. I'm Thank you. in terms of the distinguished service award committee um, those I think I just got these I would didn't really talk to Joan about them but they have been on correct if I mean, that? yeah um, although I will tell you that that committee reconfigured within the last couple of years okay. um, all of these people are fairly new to the committees this may be all of their I know it is for Mr. Halverson and Ms. Ms. Thomas. Um, their, it's their first renewal. I mean, they've okay. only been on it one sort of cycle, and the other two have not been on that long either. So, okay. um, you know, that committee in particular, it's a weird committee. The reason this was missed is they meet once a year, and it's very, uh, and it's a, like a 45 minute meeting. So right. it's, um, one of those that just slipped through the cracks. But, but uh, that is a fairly new lineup. And I think that is a committee where it's good to have people who have been in Monona for quite a while, well, have been active in the city, and know a lot of people that's because. Definitely needed for this one because yeah. these people are looking at uh, current volunteers and the service that they've done. And so we hope that there's people on this committee. That actually know some of the um, long-term volunteers that right. they're looking at. So, 
it's not a committee that you know, I hope would not be switched up a lot. Um, and in terms of um, Tony's appointment to Park and Rec, I did follow the um, process that I've determined. So, um, anyway. Great, thank you. Any other questions, yeah, Alder Wood? Just a comment, I guess, that, I mean, it could even be not that somebody's ineffective. I mean, you could have a committee that has everybody, all the members are effective, but exactly. they've all been on for a long, long time. Right. And there hasn't, and a public works committee, as an example, hasn't had any turnover in, I think, 10 or 11 years. And now at some point, it's just good, I think, to get some fresh blood or some, you know, mm -hmm. new perspective. So, so that's something that can be discussed when it right. comes up. Right. Yeah. You know. their home place. I just want to make a comment that my previous um, abstaining from voting on this, given the work that has been put in, like I wanted to be consistent with my message, like <coughs> that I'm fine not abstaining tonight because I'm confident that the work has been put in and it's been been used at some level of this and I thank you guys for putting in effort. There's no small feat. It it looks really good and it, it balances um, the different variables that I hope we would be looking at when we look at new members, reappointments and potential removal. So well done. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? All in favor of approving the appointment say aye. 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 Opposed? Appointments are approved. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned.